Hey guys, Muse Ninja Matt here, and today I'm going to be talking about Extreme Rules, basically. I managed to catch up with it and watch it, obviously, after it had gone live. But I'm just so all over the place on what I think of WWE at the moment. To me, the product and all the matches just feel dull. It feels very predictable now, and it just feels like they're determined to really keep forcing stars with no crowd reaction or bad crowd reactions, and just keep pushing them on us when they've got these amazing pools of talent that get thrown on, say, pre-show matches. And I get when they do slow burns for things, but this is another problem that they've got, is that they keep waiting until these amazing stars have actually lost steam, we've stopped caring, and then they go, and let's make them champion, let's give them a push, and we've gone, well, no, you should have done that three months ago. I'm just not enjoying it at all at the moment. So this is me just talking about Extreme Rules and what my reactions were straight after watching it, so I'm not going to mention like the Raw and Smackdown afterwards. And of course, there's going to be spoilers for the event. So we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match, and the only thing that made me remotely interested was having Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas on opposite sides, and me being like, hey, they're brothers, that's cool. But the B team won, and we got new tag team champions in a really crappy match. Just crappy opener, did not care. We had an announcement from Kurt Angle that Brock Lesnar needed to decide when he would defend his title, or he'd be stripped of the title. And it's about time Brock lost the title. The only reason anyone still cares is because we kind of want him to be UFC champion and a WWE champion. Finn versus Baron was actually an okay match, but it was very quick. And this is a theme for this pay-per-view. It's just five minute matches, apparently, because they keep having 11 matches, 12 matches per pay-per-view, as opposed to back in the day, you'd have six to eight, and they'd all get given good time. Finn beat Baron. I haven't been keeping up much with Raw and SmackDown, but apparently the storyline was just one is big, one is small, and they have a go at each other about that. Cool. The SmackDown women's title match was just awful. James Ellsworth was put in a shark cage, which was really low down, and nobody patted him down. At the opening bell, he just starts chucking shit out the cage, which we've seen before. They don't see an issue with this, that this always happens. And then his leg got caught and he was dangling and Asuka just kicked him a bit. And I think they thought the crowd was going to be like, yay, James Ellsworth's getting kicked. But no one really cared, because it would have been nice just to see a cool singles women's match without James Ellsworth, because everywhere that man goes, he just takes attention. And then Asuka lost, because her head got bounced off the cage. That was really low down, so of course her head could be bounced off of it. They then cut to something from the pre-show, which was the tables match, which unfortunately I didn't watch, but actually did look quite good. And the New Day and Sanity are very capable people, and I believe in their talents, that it was a good match. And there was Almas versus Sin Cara 2, which I don't really care about. And apparently it wasn't as good as their match on SmackDown. There was the cock shot heard around the world, as Shinsuke Nakamura's heel gimmick is literally just to be a ball buster and he hit Jeff Hardy right in the nuts and then won the US title in a matter of seconds. <sighs> and then Randy Orton came out and was like, that's not how you bust these nuts. And he put his foot right into Jeff's goodads. And everyone was like, oh, Orton heals awesome. Not if his gimmick is going to be to try and out cock shot Shinsuke. The steel cage match had potential, but made no sense. Every chance Kevin had to escape the cage, he suddenly decided, no, I'm going to stand and fight. And we're proud of you, Kev. You know, you're showing some courage, but you're also being an idiot. Just win the match. And then Braun just threw Kevin through the table. And everyone's like, Kevin Owens won. Braun Strowman doesn't care about wins and losses, just hurting people. Well then, what's the point in him 
at all. Team Helno had been attacked earlier in the night and Kane's leg was really hurt. So Daniel Bryan comes out alone and to be fair, it was pretty cool and he put some good moves in and was trying his best to survive the Bludgeon Brothers. Kane then comes out in a leg brace. And for somebody that used to be a demon, seeing him just like hobbling in a leg brace was kind of sad. On top of that, I questioned the fact that obviously WWE has no consistency because usually you have to be in the ring when the bell rings to be like sanctioned in that match. However, they were like, well, Kane was on the poster, so he can turn up when he wants in this match. But when Kane came out, there was no second wind. They lost anyway, and it just felt very pointless. Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. Loads of booze for Reigns, your super baby face, and no reaction at all for Bobby Lashley, which is a shame, because Lashley did get a hell of a lot better during his time in TNA, but the crowd just hates him. There's nothing worse than getting no reaction whatsoever. And they just hated this match, which made me hate the match more. I already hated the match. These are two guys that they're like, look at our superstars. And I'm like, I don't want to see either one of these two. Roman Reigns got well cocky because it's his yard. And then Bobby Lashley hit him with a really fucking crappy looking spear. And Bobby won. So that shut up Roman Reigns who you've been building. I'm so happy Bobby Lashley came back and is getting a lot of opportunities. So he's really earned them compared to the guys that have worked their way up NXT in the main roster for the past couple of years. The Raw women's match, where they each got to bring a friend to the ring for no reason. Why is Mickey still hanging out with Alexa? And Natalia was with Nia for no reason. And they were like, it's because she knows Ronda. Cool, maybe her and Ronda can have a chat at ringside. Oh, and in case you didn't know, Ronda Rousey bought a ticket. So she's allowed to be there. She John Cena WrestleMania the fuck out of this event. So she was there. And then Natalia was getting beat up. She was like, I ain't standing for this. I love suspensions. And she just hops the barricade and Ronda starts beating them all up. And again, it was just really pointless. AJ Styles versus Rusev, my match of the night. It was a sick match. The pace was good. They knew what they were doing. Rusev was selling like a boss. And then the ending happened. This was so time to pull the trigger on Rusev. And unless you're doing a rematch at SummerSlam, shame on you. It was the fact that Rusev was sort of hobbling back up and AJ's already hit him with a big move, tried to pin him. AJ's going for the forearm. And I'm like, right, match could kick. AJ out the air. I hate when superstars hit a finisher. It doesn't work. So they go, I'll hit another finisher. There should be a reversal here. If they just hit another finisher and win, it's kind of a crappy ending. So I was let down by the ending, but the match was cool throughout. Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. Intercontinental title, the main event, instead of your WWE title. Dolph came out doing a really failed... Gold Dust cosplay for some reason. And they tried to get loads of falls in because Seth Rollins was 3 0 up. And they were like, whoa, falls equals drama, but it doesn't. It's just stupid. And there was some good action in this match, but it just felt off. I don't know what it was. I just couldn't get into the match. Dolph Ziggler is somebody that has worked his way up and does deserve to be given more kind of spotlight. But Seth Rollins is just a boy and everyone likes Seth. So people were like, I don't really know who I want to win. Once Dolph did take the lead, he then just looked really strong and just kind of dominated the match. It ended up as a draw, which is a crappy way to end a pay-per-view. So I was like, oh, I need more than this. So Kurt Angle puts it into overtime. And then Drew McIntyre comes out, and off the distraction, Dolph wins in, like, seconds. And it was stupid. It was stupid. Like, why restart it just for that to happen? Why bother? Why bother should have been just the tagline. Extreme rules. Why bother? Also, wasn't very extreme, was it? No extreme. Every match should have had some kind of stipulation. I was just really mad, tried so hard to stick with the product, and then this show happens, and you're just like, oh, it's so lost at the moment. 
SummerSlam just needs to be really good, please. Anyway, guys, that's my rant over. Let me know what you thought of the matches at Extreme Rules. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Don't forget to check out the social media links in the description. Check out the channel and those glorious playlists and I will see all of you in the next video. Too sweet.